Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be discussing conversion factors and unit cancellation. This is a skill that you will use for the entire year. You must understand this lesson. The sooner you figure out conversion factors and unit cancellation, the easier your life will be in chemistry. It involves using numbers and units. This is what measurements are and let me demonstrate how this is going to work with some examples. So we know that in science we make measurements. Measurements have both a number and a unit. So we might say how tall are you? You wouldn't say six because you don't know is that six feet tall, six meters tall, six miles tall. So you have to include a unit with that as well. So here are some equalities that we would call unit conversions. One foot is equal to 12 inches. We know that. So if A equals B, then A divided by B is just a funny way to write one. So one foot over 12 inches is equal to one. What's another conversion factor we could make from the equality one foot equals 12 inches? Good you could also write 12 inches equal one foot. Both of those are equivalent ways to write one. They look very strange, but because there's both a number and a unit, it works out. So let's try a problem related to these conversion factors. Okay, Let's say I want to know how many inches are in three feet. So I set it up how many inches in three feet and then I could use either the first conversion, one foot over 12 inches, or the second one, 12 inches over one foot. Now, by using the second conversion, the feet up here in the numerator and the feet down here in the denominator cancel. And so that works out really nice for me. So it goes and cancels right off like that. And so now the only unit I have left is inches. So I say 3 times 12 is 36 divided by 1 is 36 with the only unit left, inches. Had I written 1 foot over 12 inches, then I would have been left with a unit of feet squared divided by inches, which is not the unit I want. We'll work some more of these to, to hopefully this will make some sense to you. So let's try this. How many centimeters are there in 1.32 meters? Now you're going to have to memorize some of those metric conversions and maybe you know there's a hundred years in a century and a centipede has about a hundred legs so there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. So that's the equality that we have to know. We could say one meter equals a hundred centimeters. That's what most would do. But I could have just as easily written there's 0 0.01 meters in a centimeter or a hundredth of a meter equals a centimeter. I'll stick with the first one for our problem. Now, the two conversion factors that we can come up with for this equality, one of them would be one meter over a hundred centimeters and the other one would be a hundred centimeters over one meter. Again, both ways to write the number one. Now, if you wrote 1 over 100 and dropped the unit, you would be incorrect. Again, it will be imperative that you include both a number and a unit with all work that you do in chemistry. So to solve this, notice I always will work these the same way. I always write, what am I looking for? X. So I'm looking for how many centimeters? X centimeters are in well that's a funny way to say equal to 1.32 meters. So I took my basically my word problem and I made it into a mathematical explanation or question. Now I need a conversion factor. I'm either going to use conversion factor A or B and the goal is I want the unit to cancel. I want the unit meter to cancel. So would I use the first one A or the second one B to make the unit meter cancel. I think you said B. Well let's look. When we cancel stuff we need whatever unit is here to be down here. 
Well, that's not in A, but it is in B. So if we use the second conversion factor and we put it in there, notice now that the meter up here and down here cancel whoosh, whoosh, like that. So that unit completely disappears and we get 1.32 times 100, that's 132, divided by 1 with the unit centimeters. That's our answer. This is what I'd like to see when you solve a problem. I don't necessarily need you to write out the equality. I don't need you to write out the two conversion factors, but I do want to see what are you looking for equal to what were you given, and then incorporate the proper conversion factor, canceling the unit till I get the final answer. Oftentimes, early on in chemistry, what I'll see is people will just move the decimal and write the answer, and maybe they were doing some of it in their head, but this is not just about getting the right answer. This is about the process of how we use conversion factors, because we will use these conversion factors for lots of things in chemistry, not just metric conversions. Let's try another one. How many meters is 8.72 centimeters? Now again, we know the conversion factor or the equality is going to be the same as the previous example. There are 100 centimeters in a meter. So I could write that equality and then there's my two applicable conversion factors. I'm only going to use one of them. So I want to write how many meters, that would be XM, is equal 8.72 centimeters. So there's my stick question. How many meters is 8.72 centimeters? I'm going to use a conversion factor. I'm going to let the question tell me which conversion factor to use using what's called dimensional analysis. You analyze or look at the unit and the dimension. I have centimeters in the numerator, so what do I want on the denominator? centimeters. So in this case, I'll use conversion factor A because I want those units to cancel. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. One meter divided by 100 centimeters. Again, a funny way to write a one. Notice the unit centimeters cancels whoosh, whoosh, like that. And now I go 8.72 times one, which is 8.72 divided by 100, 0 0.0872. Slap the unit meter on there and that's my final answer. If you want to box your answer to make it easier for me to find, that would be fantastic. Now, at this point, I don't care if you write your, your final answer in standard notation or scientific notation. We'll discuss how to do that. It will be important that you can work between the two and know what each means. Let's try some more. Sometimes the best way to do this is just jump in and practice with these unit conversions. So how many feet is 39.37 inches? Can you think of a conversion factor we might want to use? Good. One foot is 12 inches. Or I suppose you could come up with one twelfth of a foot is one inch, but that seems to be a little silly to me. So I think most of us would have came up with this one. One foot is 12 inches. Now, the conversion factor we want to use would be 1 foot divided by 12 inches, not 1 over 12, but 1 foot over 12 inches, or 12 inches over 1 foot. So here we're going to write the question, how many feet, x feet, x always represents the unknown, what you're looking for, is, that means equal to, 39.37 inches. So for some students, going from that question to this mathematical expression is the hard part. Once they have that, they can generally figure it out. We're going to use a conversion. We want the unit to cancel. If I have inches here in the numerator, what unit needs to be in the denominator? Inches. So clearly, I can't use conversion factor B. I need to use conversion factor A because I want the units to cancel. So I go ahead and put in one foot divided by 12 inches into my expression. The unit inches cancels up here and down here like that. So now I do on my calculator 39.37 times 1 divided by 12. Whatever number I get, 
and then I add the unit feet. So I'm going to get an answer of about 3.28 feet. We'll talk about significant figures and rounding that will come a little bit later. So at this point, I simply want you to understand how we're setting up these dimensional analysis or conversion factor problems. Let's try another one. How many kilometers is 15,000 decimeters? Now, I know that's maybe a silly question, and it might not be a conversion that I know. There's a riddle, an ancient riddle, that goes something about how do you eat a full-grown elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. You chop it up into very small pieces and have many, many meals with it, and you can eat an entire elephant. So what does that mean for us? It says, well, if you have a very large problem, the way you're going to solve that problem is you're going to chunk it up and break it into smaller problems. And by solving each of those smaller problems, you will finally solve your larger problem. And that might be what we have to do on this example here. So let's look. What are we looking for? How many kilometers? So how many kilometers is 15,000 decimeters? Now off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you the conversion between decimeters and kilometers, and I doubt you could either. But what we do know is this. There are a thousand meters in a kilometer, and there's also 10 decimeters in a meter. So my first conversion is going to say in one meter there are 10 decimeters. Notice that the unit decimeter cancels like that. Now, if I stopped my problem at this point, what unit would be my final answer? Would it be kilometers? No, it would be meters. So I'm not done. So I have to keep working. So now I ask myself, hey, do you know a conversion between meters and kilometers? Well, yes, I do. As I said a little bit earlier, there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. So does the thousand meters go on the top or the bottom of the conversion? The bottom, you got it. So we'll set that up. There are a thousand meters in a kilometer. Notice now that the unit meter cancels up here and down here, like that. Now the only unit I'm left with is kilometers. What I'm looking for is an answer in kilometers, so I now have the proper setup. At this point, it's simply a matter of typing it into my calculator. So I would take 15,000 times 1 equals times 1 equals divide by 10 equals, now be very careful, divide by a thousand because it's still on the bottom. Every once in a while I'll have a student take 15,000 times 1 times 1 divided by 10 and then for whatever reason they want to multiply by a thousand but because it's on the bottom you have to divide by a thousand and then add a unit of kilometers and there's your final answer. 15,000 decimeters is equivalent to 1.5 kilometers. Let's try another one. How many seconds is 4.38 days? Now, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and then try to work this out on your own before I show you. Well, welcome back. Hopefully, you figured that out. Let's see if your work looks something like mine. Maybe we started the same x seconds equal 4.3 days because we want to know how many seconds in 4.3 days. Then you probably said, well, in one day there's 24 hours. I hope you didn't say 12 hours. I mean, there's day and night, I get that. But in one day there's 24 hours. So your conversion should look like this. The day goes on the bottom, one day on the bottom, 24 hours. And notice the unit day cancels like that. Now if you stopped here, you weren't quite done because your final answer would be in hours and we want seconds. Now I'm going to take the longest route I can to get this problem done just to show you that we can use multiple conversion factors. Your next step might be to say, well in one hour there are 60 minutes. 
Now, does the hour go on the numerator or denominator? The bottom. Good, the denominator. So, one hour, 60 minutes. Notice that the hours up here and down here cancel. That's what dimensional analysis is all about. So, the hour cancels like that. If we stop now, our answer would be in minutes. I want it in seconds. So, I need yet another conversion factor. Now, I know that in one minute there are 60 seconds. So, I'll go ahead and put the minutes on the bottom to make sure that unit cancels. And it's a one minute, there's 60 seconds. Minute up here, minute down here cancels. And now the only unit I have left is seconds. So now I'm done. I just have to type it in my calculator. 4.38 times 24 equals, times 60 equals, times 60 equals, divide by 1, divide by 1, divide by 1. And that gives me my final answer. There are approximately 378,000 432 seconds in 4.38 days. If we accounted for significant figures, then we would realize that our measurement had three significant figures. These are all exact quantities, so they don't contribute to the precision of our measurement. So if we have three digits here, we would have three digits here. The way we do that is we write this in scientific notation. So it's 3.78 times 10 to the fifth. I have to move the decimal that was originally here one, two, three, four, five places over. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about scientific notation. I know everyone may not, may not be at this moment fully comfortable with that. So we'll address that in a different lesson. All right, that is, in essence, conversion factors. Uh, make sure you can do this. Watch this video a second time if you're struggling because it is a skill, something that we will be using all year long. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.